the fall of the House of Usher. During the whole of a dull, dark, and soundless day in the autumn of the year, I had been passing through a singularly dreary tract of country, and at length found myself as the shades of evening drew on, within view of the House of Usher. I reined my horse to the precipitous brink of a black and lurid tarn that lay in unruffled lustre by the dwelling, and gazed down upon the images of the grey sedge and the ghastly tree stems and the vacant, eye-like windows of the house. What was it that so unnerved a man in the contemplation of the house of Usher? Doctor. Sir? My sister. Restored, sir. Quite restored. Yes, yes. Do you believe, sir? A curious case. Remarkable. Other physicians have found it, sir. She's dazed, of course. Who could blame her? I'm in need of a stimulant myself. Well, well. There she lay, the image of death. Dead, I said, when I first set eyes on her. No pulse, in extremis, I said. But catalepsy, a trance. Fantastic. But not the first time, is it? You've had experience, sir. There have been experiences. The disease of Madeline Usher has long baffled the skill of physicians. I'd have signed your sister as dead. Yes, yes, staked my reputation. <laughs> and what now, sir? What now? Who knows? What's to be done now? Let me know your fee. I was meaning the patient, sir. What's to be done about her? You are the physician. I prescribe a change of scene, sir. I'm an honest man, you see. I could sell you a bottle of coloured water for its weight in silver, but it wouldn't have the value of the change I have in mind. Are all your drugs useless? There's not one as potent as the course I suggest. Impossible. I'm giving you my best advice. My sister will leave this house when she dies. Not until. That's an inhuman sentence to pass on a girl. I did not pass it. How can she lead a normal life here, sir? Normal? <laughs> Haven't you understood, man? What do the tenants think of my sister? You visit their hovels? Have you never heard them speak of the House of Usher? This house is one with the family, we and it, equally to be avoided. And what have you heard of it, of us? That the dead live on, maybe? That the living lie with the dead? Superstitious clods. I wouldn't listen. Even you saw my sister dead, then pronounced her restored. Can she help the catalepsy? None of us can help what we are. What is to become of us? You say that she cannot be cured. I said that she cannot be cured in this house. Then she cannot be cured. I beg to differ, sir. There is no argument. You might understand your sister better, sir, if it weren't for the years between you. Your knowledge is limited, Doctor. My sister and I are twins. Indeed. There are learned men in the city, sir, who've studied rare diseases... Do you ask me to deliver my sister's body into their hands? The unusual character of your sister's malady would surely arouse their professional pride. Like wolves scenting newly killed prey. That's a slur on dedicated men, sir. Gluttons of the dissecting table. Would you sell your patient to them? What fee could you command for such a prize? Sir, that is an unnatural suspicion. But gold is already gleaming in your eyes. I see it there. I see it. You'll be in need of medicine yourself, sir. Yes, yes. Tincture of laudanum to encourage sleep. My sister is not a commodity. Just a touch of laudanum. You'll wake refreshed as a baby. Grave rubber, ghoul. Only your imagination, sir. I understand. The strain. The beginning of madness, you think? No, no, sir. A person of nervous disposition uh, Could you tell, if you looked into a madman's face, would you recognise the glare in his eye? Examine my eyes, doctor. Tell me. 
What flames do you see there? Do you observe damnation in me? Laudanum's the thing, sir. I am not mad? No, sir, no. Not yet. Leave this place. Do not return. No, sir. 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 Has it come? Not yet. Yet it must come. Oh, God. Will there never be an end to this fear? Fear. Fear. This track leads nowhere but to the house. So? If you see a stranger heading for a quagmire, isn't a warning in order? Who are you? Who should I be but the physician? And before you damn my eyes, sir, will you ask yourself why you were brooding here, tossing stones into the lake instead of riding straight up to the door? Could it be the atmosphere that restrained you? Atmosphere? It reeks up from the decayed trees and the grey walls and the silent tarn pestilent and mystic vapor that has no affinity with the air of heaven. You wouldn't be a medical man yourself, sir? No, no. But you know your own business best. I'll leave you to be about it, sir. You out there, whoever you are, take off those boots. No footsteps. How many times must I? No, no more. The noise torment, torment my ears. Like knives, knives. Take off those boots. Stop, stop, stop. Where is Roderick Usher? You there, crouching in the corner. Where? Here. Such as is left of him here. Roderick? Shh, 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 shh. Softly. You're so changed. Your whiteness. I was always pale, was I not? Creatures that fear the light grow cadaverous. This ghastly complexion is the mark of the grave. I meant... Your hair. Oh, yes, my hair. Snow in summer. I put on white when my father died. We haven't seen each other since. I've seen few people since. You left university so abruptly. I believe your father died unexpectedly. He hanged himself in front of that window. The setting sun was the last light he saw. He left a message to say that he could not endure another night with this house. I was not informed. I'm an indifferent correspondent. Besides, my father left so much unfinished business. But this is a cold greeting. Dear friend, welcome, welcome with all my heart. Welcome to Usher. You cannot believe how I've waited for this moment. To see you again after so long. I mean that most sincerely. A fire has been burning in your room for days. Were you so sure that I would come? I wrote to you. After how many years? You are my friend. The only friend I ever made. This habitual reserve of mine has always been confoundedly excessive. Hmm? Roderick. I'm sure you will forgive any shortcomings. Our entertainment has grown somewhat rusty. Visitors seldom call. Perhaps the atmosphere is too chill for them. The fault of building by a lake. My ancestors have a lot to answer for. But thank you again for coming, dear friend. Your letter spoke of illness. I was overcome by an earnest desire to see you again. It was a very singular summons. Was it, sir? In fact, so wildly importunate, I could only answer it in person. Maybe, sir. 
I remembered your constant cheerfulness while we were together. I hoped that might bring some relief to my... And I was right, yes. I am better already for seeing you. You wrote of acute bodily disorder. Did I? Of oppressive mental distress. <laughs> I must plead guilty to exaggeration. But you have been ill. A constitutional family evil passed down like the house from usher to usher. It displays itself in a host of unnatural sensations. For instance, I suffer from a morbid acuteness of the senses. Delusion, maybe, but it grows sharper with the years. How can I make you understand? I find the perfumes of all flowers oppressive. I can only wear garments of a certain texture. My eyes are tortured by extravagant colors. Noise inspires me with horror, and there's no remedy. No remedy, Roderick. But you are here now. That was foolishness. Please forgive me. There is nothing to fear. What do you fear? Nothing. I said nothing. There's nothing to fear. In heaven's name, what was that? Only the house. It shook. My ancestors built on infirm foundations. The floors trembled like an ague fit. The walls... Will last my lifetime, I promise you. After that, what matter? What have you not told me? What is there to tell? Sometimes I feel as though the house and myself were one. Could a man also be part of these grey walls and turrets? Tangled with a fungus that eats into their fabric, could my roots reach below the tarn? If I looked into its depths, could I foresee my own end? Fantasy. Of course. But, as I stand here, I imagine I feel the lapping of the black waters, and far below, a rat gnaws at the wainscot. Dark corridors, like tunnels, run through my brain. Their banners heavy with dust. Not a moth can settle, but I know of it. And my sister has just left her room. Your sister? Madeline. I was not aware of The heavy door swings behind her. She pauses, summoning her strength. You've never before spoken of a sister? My twin. Perhaps not. For these last long years, she has been my sole companion. Now she is to be taken from me. Why did you never even mention her name? She's been confined to this house. She bears up steadily against the disease that wastes her. She fights her weakness, refusing to surrender to her bed. Ah, so that physician was for your sister. You encountered him. His greed is even more embracing than his ignorance. He will not return. My sister is seeking us. You don't recognize the rustle of a woman's skirt? I hear nothing. You are not an usher. No human ear could detect so faint a sound. The house hears. And I am one with the house. The armorial trophies tremble as she brushes against them slightly. So slightly. Sword against shield, helmet against spear. This is invention. Tapestries on the wall shudder as her hand glides along their somber length. She has reached the stairway. She clutches at carvings for support as she descends. Step by painful step. One. Two. Slowly so. Slowly. Three. Do you still believe I hear nothing? I believe you have a potent imagination. What I heard, I heard. I heard nothing. She pauses on the threshold. She is here. Roderick? Madeline? Is this your friend from the university, Roderick? Ma'am. My brother often spoke of you. If you are Roderick's friend, you must be my friend too. Indeed. You live in the city, do you not? I do. I have been unable to leave this house, but one day I shall travel to the city. Oh, it will be waiting for me. Crowds and spires, bells and carriage wheels, mm, scented trees and dust. Madeline. When your friend returns to the city, perhaps we shall return with him. No, Madeline. 
Tell me, sir, how long does it take to ride there? My dear, we shall not be journeying to any city. Neither you nor I. Oh, my brother means that I have been ill. Indeed, my illness has been long continued and I believe severe. But the doctor assured me that I am much better. He left medicine for you. The medicine makes me ill, and after it I cannot stay awake. You need sleep to conserve your strength, my dear. I am stronger now. Well, see, I can stand unaided. Oh, well, perha perhaps I should return to my room, though. It grows late and, and I grow dull. But you will still be with us tomorrow? I shall be here. Well, we shall meet again, then, tomorrow. I trust her. Good night, Roderick. Good night, sir. Good night. I do not think you will see my sister tomorrow. I do not think you will see her again while she is living. I can listen to the music of only a few stringed instruments. I've not seen your sister today. She has not left her room. All other music is intolerable to me. You surely don't believe her so near to death. Near. So near. She's all I have and she will leave me. She will leave me alone in this empty and echoing place. There is always hope. Dear fellow, you are so distressingly sane, but haven't you felt the terror? On the fringe of a nightmare, say, of being at the mercy of a power beyond you. At the pinch of a finger, the solitary candle will be out. No? The power is there, though. It is amused to linger. But one day, the fingers will pinch we are so helpless. Nonsense. Rotten. Rotten. Threadbare tapestries and moth-eaten banners. Behind a noble facade, stairs and beams riddled with worms. It could all be made good. This house is not waiting for repairs. It is waiting to be destroyed. Ushers made this house. This house made ushers. In these past two days, you've not once mentioned your sister. She is still with us. Constantly, in my thoughts. From your expression, no doubt also in yours. She has not left her room again. She's sleeping. Natural sleep or induced by poppies. All the poppies in the East could not do as much for me. Happy wretch to sleep without dreams. Engage another physician. How can they be expected to cure the incurable? Canst thou not minister to a mind diseased? Madeline's mind is not diseased, nor is yours. I merely suffer from fear. Say that I'm plagued by the shadow that haunts this place. Fear is not a disease. It rots the mind as surely as the fungus clinging to the walls. Like the fissure, it will tear the fabric asunder. Fear was built into the very stones of this house. It lurks beyond the candle flame. It whispers down the corridors. It lies by your bed. Fear of what? Just fear. Purposeless. Fear, fear of living, fear of dying, fear of night, fear of day, fear of enemies, fear of friends, fear of the future, fear of the past, fear, fear, fear. Hysteria. I'm bound slave to it. You consider it deplorable folly. I've heard of those who have frightened themselves to death. Yes, I shall perish in this folly. I must perish in it. That is the way in which I shall finally be lost. Thus, not otherwise. I'm not a coward. I can face physical danger. 
But the time will come, sooner or later, when I shall lose my life and my reason together in some struggle with the grim phantom. Listen. In the greenest of our valleys, by good angels tenanted, once a fair and stately palace, radiant palace, reared its head. In the monarch thought's dominion, it stood there. Never seraph spread a pinion of a fabric half so fair. Shall I be permitted to attend on Madeline? Still engrossed with my sister. I, I feel a natural anxiety. And travellers now within that valley, through the red litten windows, see vast forms that move fantastically to a discordant melody while like a rapid ghastly river through the pale door a hideous throng rush out forever and laugh but smile no more uh, Roderick were you aware that this book is exceedingly rare, yet it was tossed on the floor along with the other... I... I... Roderick? Years ago, when we were children, she would come to me. When my father beat me because I was too slow in answering, or too fast, she would come to me with comfort. When he threatened her with the turret room and bread and water, she would come to me for protection. We were children then. Madeline. In those days... It seemed that we found our only happiness with each other. The years passed like a long, freezing night, and we huddled together for warmth. Wretched, happy time. What of Madeline? Until she withdrew into her other strange world where days vanished from the calendar and clocks lied about the time. She did not seem to understand the true nature of her illness. Perhaps she did not want to understand. You must both return with me. Now. She will not return with you. Now or ever, disease wasted her body, but she was always the strong one. While I cringed before the usher dead, she defied them. She defied them until the end. The end? The Lady Madeline is dead. Dead, you say? The catastrophe was not unexpected. Sooner or later, the thread was bound to snap. The sword to fall. Dead? You must see her. Yes, you must see her again. I warned you that you would not see her again while she lived. But now, come with me, friend. Come, come, come. There she lies. Asleep. Dead. No, she's alive. She must be. You cannot lend even your vigor to a corpse. She looks so... so... Young, fresh... The grave isn't reserved for the old and ugly. It's a democratic place we all come to. There's colour in her cheeks. A symptom of her malady. In all cases of this kind, the disease leaves the mockery of a blush. A suspiciously lingering smile, indeed. Why should she not smile? She has escaped these monstrous walls at last. She must be warm. Put your hand to her cheek. Put your hand to her cheek. Feel. Cold already. Cold. Her heart has stopped. Her blood is congealing. Take her pulse, if you do not believe. Take it. Take it. Oh. Is there a flutter? Ever so feeble? Her hands are rigid. Wait. There must be no doubts. Here's a mirror. Hold it over her mouth. So. Has it clouded? Does she breathe? No. She died in my arms. She'd been troubled by dreams and was afraid to sleep again. I soothed her fears. I whispered that she should close her eyes and surrender to the dark. 
The dark brings sleep, sleep brings peace. She was not afraid to die. Why fear sleep? Sleep. A touch of fever burned on her brow. I smoothed it with my cool fingers and urged her to sleep, to sleep. She slipped away as I held her, my cheek against her cheek. As the minutes passed, I realized that I was holding nothing. Nothing but cold clay. As I laid her down upon her bed, I wept and prayed. But what use of prayers and tears she has passed, and she will not return. The doctor must be called. No. But if Madeline is dead... While she lived, I did my utmost to protect her, always. Could I have done more? I protected her then. I must still protect her. From what? There have been certain obtrusive and eager inquiries on the part of medical men. You surely don't fear grave robbers, not in these remote parts. What country better for that purpose? The family burial ground is remote and exposed. Lying there, her body would be unguarded and at their mercy. I still cannot believe. Will you never believe what is before you? The unusual character of Madeline's illness has aroused interest in certain quarters. One individual has already made an infamous suggestion. You met him on the day of your arrival. But what is to be done? We can hardly mount constant guard over the burial ground. In the first place, we shall not inform the villain that my sister is dead. At least, not until it is too late for him to profit. She must be buried. She will be. How? I shall preserve her body in one of the vaults below this building. There are many vaults within these walls. You have not seen them yet? You shall. Soon. You shake your head. Is the precaution so unnatural? Do you see harm in it? Um, no, but... How long? A fortnight should suffice. The jackals always seek a fresh victim. Are you with me? More is involved than a lightly made decision. Not lightly made, but long foreseen. Everything is ready. How? Everything. Ah! There. Waiting. Madeline made her peace with death long ago. It was her wish to have her coffin near. Silken lined, and the pillow edge with lace, soft and smooth. Beauty to beauty. We have little enough to do, but it must be done soon, soon. Soon. Ah, oh, something brushed my mouth. I can't see in this balloon. I felt like a cobbler. These noises penetrate my head. Where are we? The vaults. Tunnels, alcoves, cells. Water oozing down the walls in green trails. These passages crawl under the lake. In times past, some of them were used as dungeons. Doubtless foul deeds were done here. In those days, the walls echoed with screams. That noise! The house. You've heard it before. Here below, the sound reverberates with greater menace. Hold your torch higher. This oppressive atmosphere half smothers the flame. There. Do you see? The fissure. The fissure? The crack stretches from roof to foundations. Every year, it opens a little wider. Only a little. But one day, the entire building must split and crumble into the tarn. The waters will rush in, carrying everything before them like a great cleansing. Follow me. The room we seek is even further and not subject to this insidious ooze. Hold both the torches, my friend. I must press both hands to my ears. Stand still. Stand still! Apparently in remote times. This archway was used as a place of deposit for gunpowder, so the whole interior was carefully sheathed with copper. At the end of the archway, do you observe a massive iron door, similarly protected? As I've no wish to prolong my agony, I shall make what haste I can to traverse this archway and to open that door. Is this the place? Is the place. 
so long unopened. Our torches burn so dim they barely pierce the darkness. Without them, the blackness will close in again. Is she to lie here? For only a little while. Here? We make our final preparations, then bear the mournful burden to this spot. Time enough for tears, then. Time enough. The burden was not heavy. The candles... Use the torch to light them. For a while the shadows may be driven back. So. So. What ceremony besides? On this occasion we must be brief. Time enough for full rites when the weeks have passed. The lid of the coffin has yet to be screwed down. Wait. Wait? Very well. Help me to turn it aside. This must be our last chance to look at her. She is beautiful. Hair like the raven's back. Skin white as bone. Lips bright as bellies. The red berries were forbidden as red berries are poisonous. Still the flush of life in her cheeks. I saw her only once while she lived. When I look from you to her, from her to you... As I said, we were twins. Sympathies of a scarcely intelligible nature existed between us. Now there is a void. Part of my own life was bound to die with her. We should not gaze too long. Even in death she calls me. She calls to both of us in that way. At least she is at peace. She at last is at peace. The lid must be closed, now. You fasten those screws. I shall tighten these. What of the candles? Leave them burning. They will shed light for a while, for a very little while. We did right? We did right. Yes. We must have done right. What a brief life a candle has. When we were children, Madeline and I made up stories. We made up stories about the Usher dead. Children have always delighted in frightening themselves. Yes, indeed. We laughed at them. They lie in their graves deep down. No one ever leaves their graves, do they? An absurd notion. Yes, Madeline laughed at the notion too. Though sometimes the dead make us do strange things like... Like we cannot help ourselves. They're very powerful. That is, they would be, if one believed in them. We made silly jokes about them. About the way they see into every corner of the house. About the way their fingers grow like reeds through their coffin lids. Foolishness. Children's tales. There are no usher dead. They're dead. I've always laughed at them. I've laughed at them for not being there. They do not like to be laughed at. Why should we take notice of them? They don't exist. They have never. Huck. I hear nothing. No. Uh, there is nothing to hear. You do not hear the scratching, like rats in the woodwork. I told you, I hear nothing. Would you believe me if... No, who would believe? Believe what? We do not believe in the usher dead whose fingers grow through their coffin lids. Do we? <laughs> Children's stories. Children's stories indeed. But would you believe that... that I am not yet mad? I believe that you are as sane as I am. Then why... Listen... 
I was listening to your guitar. Play again. Yes, sir. Of course. Listen. Driving yourself to the brink. And for what purpose? Madeline is dead. We laid her in the vault almost a week ago, but no amount of feverish activity can restore her. Ah. Is it here? What are you seeking? Day after day, room after room. It must be one of them. It must. Surely I can help you. Help? What in this life can help me now? Only tell me, what weighs upon your mind? I have the courage. God, give me the courage. Little animals tunnel and bore. Do you hope to find an animal? One that scratches and tears, but not here. It's not here. If it's not here, it must be elsewhere. There are further chambers, higher galleries, attics, stairways, passages, stalls. Roderick, you must sleep. A whirlwind has collected its force about the house. Clouds career from all points against each other without passing away into the distance. Come away from the window. A tempestuous night, a night of terror and wild beauty. Pile up clouds, press down upon these turrets and shroud us. You must not. The air is chill and you are overexcited. Did you ever behold such a spectacle? No moon, no stars, yet the huge masses around us glow. There's no cause for bewilderment. We are not seeing ghosts. This unnatural light merely has its origins in the rank miasma of the tarn. No, don't return to the window. The sight only disturbed you. I'll read and you shall listen. Here's the old storybook I picked up the other day. We'll pass away this terrible night together. <gasps> Be still. We cannot control the storm. Not the storm, not the storm. Hark. Judgment day has come. I must be mad now. Am I? Am I mad? No. No. Madness would come as a release. But it must surely come. Soon. Strike me then. Strike me. Gently, gently. My ears. We must drown the tempest then. Let me see where I Yes. And the knight who was mighty withal waited no longer to hold parley, but fearing the rising of the tempest, uplifted his mace outright and with blows made quickly room in the plankings of the door for his gauntleted hand. And now pulling therewith sturdily he so ripped and tore all asunder that the noise of the dry and hollow sounding wood reverberated throughout. It's not possible. You heard the window sashes rattle. They're protesting at the rising gale. Silence now. Silence. No more scratching. Shall I continue? But the good champion, now entering within, was amazed to perceive a dragon which sat on guard. And the knight uplifted his mace and struck upon the head of the dragon, which fell before him with a shriek so horrid and harsh. <gasps> How? Mercy. No sound now. No sound. Nothing now but to wait. To wait. Now the champion, bethinking himself of the brazen shield, approached valorously to where it hung upon the castle wall, which in sooth tarried not for his full coming, but fell down at his feet with a terrible ringing sound. Did you hear that? 
hear it? <laughs> yes, I heard it. I've heard it long, 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 many minutes, many hours, many days I've heard it. Yet I dared not, God forgive me, miserable wretch that I am, I dared not speak it. Don't you understand yet? We have put her living into the tomb. Said I not that my senses were acute? Now I can tell you that I heard her first feeble efforts in that hollow coffin. I heard them. Many, many days ago, yet I dared not, I dared not speak. Now tonight, the breaking door, the death cry, the shield, you heard them, even you. Say rather the rending of her coffin, the grating of the iron hinges of her prison, her struggles within the coppered archway of that vault. I can't believe you. She's coming. Where can I fly? I saw her dead. The dead cannot walk. She will soon be here. She's hurrying to confront me. Haven't I heard her footstep on the stair? Do I not distinguish that heavy and horrible beating of her heart? <laughs> Is she not here? No, no. Madeline. I tell you that now she stands outside the door. <laughs> Madeline. Don't come near me. D -d Don't come near me. Hold me. Hold me. death agony she bore him to the floor, a corpse, a victim to the terrors he had anticipated. From that chamber and that house, I fled, aghast. The storm was still abroad in all its wrath. Suddenly, there shot along the old path a wild light. The radiance was that of the full setting and blood-red moon which now shone vividly through the fissure extending from the roof of the building to its base. While I gazed, this fissure rapidly widened and the entire orb of the moon burst upon my sight. My brain reeled as I saw the mighty walls rushing asunder. And the deep and dank tarn at my feet closed sullenly and silently over the fragments of the house of Usher. The Fall of the House of Usher by Edgar Allan Poe was dramatised by David Campton and starred Edward Petherbridge as Roderick Usher, Tim Piggott Smith as the narrator. Roger Hume as the Doctor, and Sarah Pugsley as Madeline. The guitarist was John Turner, and it was directed in Bristol by Brian Miller.